It's no different than when you build a house and decide to live in it. <laughs> he built a world that reflected his nature and chose to live within it. But then he builds another world. So, so I'm giving you the, the main purpose of heaven because, because there's something I want you to see. Did you know that when, what's this? The Bible says in the Beatitudes, the meek will do what? Why would you inherit the earth if when, we, if when Jesus returns, we're not going to live here? Did you know that the earth is the inheritance of the sons and daughters of God? So God is bringing us back to the original intent from the beginning. And, and where did he put Adam and Eve? He put them on the earth. Now watch this. Oh my goodness, this is good. So, so watch this. It says this. It says, huh, there's so much I want to say. It says that God said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. It says, male and female, he created them. He called their name Adam. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that he foreknew us. Now, when you read in Genesis chapter 2 that God took the dirt of the earth and formed man, that was not man's beginning. That was man's beginning on earth. Man's beginning was in Genesis 1. Genesis 2 is when man was given a body. Ah. Mm. There's so much here. So he was given a body. But there's something that, that I want you to see, and there's a reason why I'm telling you this. He gives, he gives man a body, and man begins, there's a, there's a foundational shift that I want you to see. The moment that God made man, there was a shift. And this was the shift. Notice that God then brings the animals to Adam. Why did he do that, though? From that moment, if you notice, God went from speaking into creation to speaking to man. And then man began to speak to creation on behalf of God. Now, if you, if you go, and, and I don't have time to go there because there's so many places I want to go, but if you look at Genesis 1, when God begins it, when he says, let us create man in our image and likeness, he then says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. This is before he formed man from the dust of the earth. You know what that means? God had a brief, even with us individually, before you were born, the Lord spoke to your spirit about what you were called to do. Uh, so, so watch this. So that's why when you get a prophecy, you may have never heard it before. Now, there are people that teach and they say things like all prophecy uh, is, is just confirmation. I completely disagree with that because the first prophecy I ever got, I had no idea that that was what God was calling me to do. And so it wasn't a confirmation to me. I don't think prophecy was a confirmation to David when he, when he realized that he would be king over Israel because he didn't know it before. I don't think prophecy was, well, says the, I don't think it was confirmation to Mary when she found out that she would carry Jesus. So a lot of things that are taught uh, um, traditionally in the church, we have to be careful not to just regurgitate what we heard someone say. Because some of these things that are being taught are making people reject prophecies that are actually from the heart and mind of God. And they reject them because they say, I didn't know that already. So hear what I'm saying. So, so when you get a prophecy, how'd you know it was true? Because your spirit bared witness with it. But how did your spirit bear witness if your spirit didn't know? Uh, that means your spirit knew, your mind just didn't know. <laughs> did you, you know what learning is in the supernatural, seriously? Learning is rehearsing. It's a rehearsal. You know, okay, let me use the word, the renewal of the mind. Now, if you have Netflix and your subscription runs out, you have to renew it. That means that you previously had it. The renewal of the mind is God restoring a knowledge. 
that God had already given man. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm almost where I want to be. So, so I want you all to see this. So, so the Bible says things that do appear are not made of things that appear. So what this means is that the invisible world, so when God created the heavens and the earth, notice the heavens are mentioned first. The reason the heavens are mentioned first is this, is, this created a principle that God does things in the spirit first. And, and it makes the supernatural, this term, the realm of origination. So the supernatural is the realm of origination. That means anything that is in this world must come from that realm first. That's what I mean when I say things that do appear, so things you can see, are not made of things that do appear. Okay, so what does this mean about heaven? This is, this is my fun part. This is what I want to get to. God did not really need heaven. He wanted heaven. Because according to Scripture, now let me say it like this. If heaven was before God, then heaven would be God. God made heaven. Okay? So, this means he existed without it. Oh, my. <laughs> he made it because he wanted it. He chose to dwell there, but he still doesn't technically need it. He just wants it. So, 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 what, so what else is heaven for if he didn't need it to exist? Many people teach heaven like God needed heaven to exist. No, he wanted heaven. He chose by his own will as God to make a world that was suited for him. But then he made another world, but he supplied that second world from the first. So do you know what heaven is? Heaven is a resource center for the earth. So what this means is as long as there's a heaven, you will never actually be in lack. The key is learning how to access what's in heaven. And this is what faith is for. That's why faith is having a revelation of what's in heaven. Of what's in the invisible. Why? Because revelation, there's another thing that revelation does. Revelation is also... One of the prerequisites for something to enter the earth. So, so I'll give you a couple examples. So, you know how the Bible says, surely the Lord shall do nothing. Someone say nothing. So he won't do anything. And it says, unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Now, I, I don't want to, for all our prophets that are in the room, I don't want you to feel bad. Uh, but I want you to know that that verse was written in the old covenant. So... It's not that prophets don't still initiate agendas of heaven through their mouth. But it's also this. The principle of that is no longer just for prophets. Now it's a principle of revelation. God will do nothing until it's revealed. Oh, my goodness. So now we know another reason why the devil doesn't want the church to come into revelation. Because God will do nothing until it's revealed. <laughs> this is good. So God needs, just as he needed Adam to name the animals, because he gave Adam dominion in the earth. That means in this realm, God follows his own authority that, in, watch this, that he created. That's why, watch this, he came to the earth as a man. He had to come as a man because I gave man dominion here. So, so, oh my goodness. So, oh, this is good. So he follows his own, he, watch this, he's so integral that he won't go back and reverse what he established originally. He said, what I'll do, I'll come as a man and redeem creation as a man. Adam fell, I'll come as Adam. So what this means is what theology calls the first Adam is a bit of an error. He was the first, watch this, really Adam was patterned after the original. But, 
I'll say it this way. If Adam was the original Adam and he fell, we would have lost the blueprint of Adam. Adam was fashioned after Adam. The original was Jesus. Jesus is the original. <laughs> Adam was just sitting here first. <laughs> okay. This is fun. So, so let's continue. Now, now, there's a few things I want you to see, and, and, I, and I'm almost to, to this actual teaching. <laughs> um, this is fun, though, because we must know our authority in order to do deliverance, in order to, to effectively do deliverance ministry, especially territorial deliverance. We need to know who we are as sons. And, and I want you to see this. Um, the Bible says, Jesus, he said an unusual prayer. It was an unusual prayer that Jesus prayed. Um, and, and it was, Father, the glory that I had with you in the beginning. He asked for that glory to be restored. Now, if I don't lay a certain framework, it can almost sound blasphemous what I'm about to teach you. What I found is that sometimes spiritualities, they sound blasphemous when there's a lack of understanding. And this is one of the reasons why when Jesus spoke, they said he was committing blasphemy. But it was around the exact same revelation too. And guess what that revelation was? Sonship. Today we have a generation that, that we say daddy God without really knowing what that means to be a son. But the Bible says that Jesus brought many sons or reconciled many sons into the glory. So sonship by definition is a person that's been reconciled back to the glory realm that Adam fell from. So when it says Adam fell, it's not like, I don't want you to think fell like stumble. Think fall like being in a place and falling out of it. Adam fell out of the glory. Or I'll say it this way. Adam was disconnected from the glory dimension. So Jesus, one of the reasons that Jesus died, it was for the forgiveness of sin, yes, but it was also to restore man back to the glory dimension. The glory is normal for you. The glory is not something that's difficult for the church to access. No, the, the glory is not something that hopefully we can gain if we just work hard enough to come into. No, the glory is your normal reality. And so, so, so watch this. So Jesus brought many sons into the glory, but back to the prayer. Jesus said this, this prayer and he said, Lord, our father, the glory that I had with you in the beginning, that I had with you in the beginning. He asked for God to restore it. Then he also prays that as I am one with you, make them one with me. He begins to pray that the glory that, that he has been given by the Father will be given to us. Now, but there's a, a, a small thing that I must say that, that I want you to grab. 